Welcome back to class. So like we are simulating vector autoregressive processes and uh, we want to generate some impulse response functions. We have done that already in Excel. Uh, in scenario A, we looked at a GDP shock and in scenario B, uh, we looked at an inflation shock. Let's recap what was going on. So like we assumed that uh, the intercepts in this reduced VARs are equal to zero. And then we uh, assumed the following coefficients like 0.8 and 0.2 in the GDP equation and 0.3 and 0.5 in the inflation equation. Let's switch to scenario C and perform like a simulation first in Excel then we are going to import this data in eViews. We are estimating uh, VAR and afterwards we are generating impulse response functions. On top of the assumptions which we made before with respect to the coefficients, we are assuming that the error term epsilon in the GDP equation is standard normally distributed with an expected value of zero and a standard deviation of 0.1. The error term mu in the inflation equation is also standard normal distributed with an expected value of zero and a standard deviation of 0.3. Uh, we should simulate n equal to 5000 random variables for each error term and generate the two time series for GDP and inflation over time. We are performing that in Excel. And then we are copying the information to eViews. And in, in eViews, we are estimating a var with a constant and one leg. We are creating impulse response functions and we are relating these impulse response functions with them from eViews uh, to the ones we created in the Excel file. Let's switch first to Excel and here I would like to highlight how we can generate these error terms. We have to go to data. Then there is one I can call data analysis and uh, the one menu point is called Zufallszahlengenerierung random number generation. Here we can press OK and um, uh, we can um, Think about the distribution, it should be a standard normal. We want to have one variable with uh, 5000 observations. This should be have um, um, expected value of zero and a standard deviation of one. When I press the OK button, I get like 5000 information about the epsilon. I performed the same step with respect to mu. There, of course, I changed um, uh, the um, standard deviation like to the value of 0.3 here and then I uh, created like a mu variable. Like in column B we have all the epsilons they stem from a normal distribution expected value of zero standard deviation 0.1 and we have like about 5,000 observations for our epsilon. Then we have a normal distribution, expected value of zero, standard deviation equal to 0.3 for the mu variable. And also here, like we have like 5,000 mu's. Um, we are assuming the, that in t minus 3, t minus 2, t minus 1, um, the process is in an equilibrium and then in a first step it is the case that here uh, like a GDP shock occurs but also like the inflation shock occurs. Um, these shocks are like in T plus one of course like equal like to these error terms because of the fact that before the system was in equilibrium. So only the error term ma uh, matters here in T plus one, but of course this changes afterwards because afterwards it is also the case that the lagged endogenous variables play a role. Uh, once more, the formula in cell number E12. 
uh, we are relating to um, the coefficient 0 0.8 multiplying through by um, the lagged endogenous variable and then we are relating to uh, the coefficient 0 0.2 and we are relating it to the inflation lag and we are adding now the error term. Formula for the inflation series, uh, we are um, freezing cell number F5, multiplying through by the lagged endogenous variable. Then we are adding like 0.3 times uh, the GDP in the previous period in 11. And we are adding like the mu shock in C12. We are copy pasting all the information down. And then I once more generated like here the same time series with a label, like all the information which are given in the yellow area. Uh, they are also given in G and the H variable, uh, H column, so that I can easily copy this information like two, um, two EVs. Now I also opened the eViews um, program and I'm creating a new eViews worksheet with like 5,000 observations for our two variables. And now I'm copy pasting this information like from Excel uh, to eViews so that we have now um, GP and inflation series in our eViews file. Now I would like to estimate a var. Uh, so object, new object, and then in the lower part we find a var. So object, new object, var. And I have to specify here like the two variables, GDP and inflation. And then we want to have one lag. In eViews, you have to say one one in case that you want to have one lag. And uh, that's it. So I press the OK button. Then I get the result here. Let's try to augment this part if this is possible. Um, so it is the case that the estimated coefficient in the GDP equation related to the lagged uh, GDP variable is indeed equal to 0.8. Uh, the inflation uh, parameter in the GDP inflation, uh, equation is indeed equal to 0.2. And uh, with respect to the inflation uh, variable, uh, the lagged GDP um, uh, estimation is 0.28. The true value is 0.3. With respect to inflation, uh, the lagged endogenous variable in the inflation um, equation, the estimated coefficient like is close to the true value of 0.5. So here are minor differences between the estimated coefficient and like the true value of 0.3, but that's only like a minor deviation. So in the next step, I would like to create the impulse response functions. So I'm going to impulse here and um, like everything is fine, horizon length is equal to 10. So I'm pressing the OK button again. And then I get here like my impulse response functions. Uh, in the left part, like we have the GDP innovations, so GDP shocks. And you can see here that in the first period, it is a case that when a GDP shock occurs, like the GDP variable reacts, but it is a case that the inflation variable does not react in like the first period when the GDP shock occurs. The GDP shock um, is digested over time. So like uh, GDP is decreasing again until we reach the value of zero. Uh, with respect to the inflation uh, time series, 
due to an, a GDP shock, we can see here that uh, in the first like two or three um, periods, uh, the inflation is increasing and only afterwards the inflation is decreasing. In the right part, we can see like the graphs when an inflation innovation occurs, so inflation shock occurs. In the first period, GDP does not react because it's an inflation shock. We can see here that also in the first period, the inflation goes up and then inflation decreases over time to the value of zero again. Uh, in the upper part, it is the case that uh, GDP increases like in the first like two, uh, th two to three periods uh, and only after like four periods it is a case that the GDP shock uh, that the uh, GDP decreases again due to this inflation shock. More or less like we have we are familiar with these um, uh, impulse response functions already however like the size of the shock is different when we compare our Excel files and the eViews files. Why is that? Uh, the difference is because in eViews, it is a case that uh, eViews assumes that the shock size is equal to one standard deviation. Uh, we can have a look how large the standard deviation is. Of course, like the standard deviation like in the GDP equation is equal to like 0.1 and the um, innovations uh, in the inflation uh, time series is equal to 0.3. Like we know the true values because we said Excel that we want to have a standard normal distribution, expected value of zero and 0.1 for epsilon and like expected value of 0 and 0.3 for mu. And hence, the size of the shock is equal to like 0.1 here and 0.3 when it comes to an inflation shock. So we can also, of course, uh, normalize our shocks in the same way in Excel. So like when we um, are setting the, the shock here equal to 0.1, the GDP shock, then we get like more or less exactly uh, the sh same impulse response functions as in eViews. Like in the upper part, the response of GDP to a GDP innovation, like here the shock size is equal to 0.1, GDP decreases afterwards. And with respect to inflation, it is a case that we have no reaction in T, and then inflation increases in the next three periods, but then inflation decreases. Same with respect to the inflation shock. When we want to create like the same graph as in eViews, we have to set like the shock size equal to like 0.3 when it comes to the inflation shock. Then we have here in the lower part, the response of the inflation time series to an inflation innovation, to an inflation shock. Shock size is 0.3, then decreases over time. And here GDP, no reaction in T, but uh, GDP increases for like three periods and then decreases again. So like these pictures in Excel are now more or less completely in line with uh, the information given in eViews. So I hope that you find like these instructions insightful, like how to estimate a reduced VAR uh, in eViews. Um, the special thing about this VAR is that we are not using data of the real world, but we are simulating this time series so that we know the true values, we know the true characteristics of the data generation process, and hence uh, we can learn a lot about like how these impulse response functions have to be interpreted. Uh, I think this is uh, like a valuable uh, assignment. So thank you very much for like watching this video. Have a nice day and bye-bye.